So I got another question that came in for Studio One. This time, it's actually a friend of a colleague that had asked me a question before. So he had another question, something completely unrelated to what I talked about the last time. I'm going to go ahead and play his question, which came to me in the form of an audio note. So let's say I'm doing a recording session with the band, and we're tracking at least five songs. I set up the first session, and I get everyone's cue mixes uh, through Studio One to sound good, so everyone's got the right thing in their headphones. Now, song's finished, we go to the next song. How do I import all those same cue mixes? So that every song we track has the same headphone mix for everybody. Okay, great question. So we're gonna tackle that right now. So the first thing I'm gonna say is that if you're working and you're working in a studio and you have your setup, the one of the most important things that you can do is you definitely want to make sure that you are um, creating yourself um, a default audio IO setup. So this is going to depend on the gear you have, if you have any external gear, if you want to give things custom names, but basically you want to have all your inputs labeled and you want to have all of your outputs labeled. The minute that happens, you definitely want to click make default. What this means is that every new song that is created will use that as the starting point for your I.O. setup. So you don't have to change anything. Now, this is actually important in this step. So what I've done here is I've basically mocked up what Tyler was asking about. So I've got a session over here. We've got kick, snare, hats, tom high, tom mid, tom low, room, overhead left, overhead right. Then we've got bass, we've got guitar, we've got keys, and we've got vocals. Also, I've added in an effects return here, just a bit of reverb. It's got a different level for, for the vocals that it does for these two other elements. So this, in my mind, would be like a bare bone representation of what Tyler is talking about. Tracking a band live off the floor. Now, the next thing that I've done is I've gone into the I.O. setup and I've clicked the outputs tab and I've enabled discrete cue mixes. So HP1, HP2, I have QA and then I have QB. All of these cue sends have been enabled. Now, it's important to keep in mind a couple things when you talk about cue mixes. The first thing is what I'm listening to in the control room, and if I'm monitoring the main outs on my headphones, is the mix that's coming off the faders. These four sets of cue mixes are a completely separate mix, and I've actually gone in and I have uh, made each of these mixes slightly different just for sake of demonstration. And so you can see here that the unlock symbol, the lock level and pan to channel, this is, um, it's not illuminated because I've made changes. If I was to want to lock any of these to the main mix, it's very easy to do that, but uh, that's not what I want to do. So let's undo that and let's bring ourselves to a step back to where we were. Okay, so let's assume that this is the first song that we've successfully tracked. Everybody is super happy with the levels. You're generally happy with the levels that you have on the main faders and all of the artists are really loving their independent mixes. Also, another thing to keep in mind with cue mixes when you're using uh, a cue mix and you're assigning it to discrete outputs is that each one of these, HP1, HP2, QA, and QB, you, when it comes to the click track, the click track for those discrete headphone mixes is available in the outputs. So you're enabling the click for each of those cue mixes that you've set up, HP1, HP2, QA, and QB, and also you have control over the level. So I don't even have to be listening to a click in the control room or anything like that. I could be listening without a click and everybody else is getting their own mix through a discrete output and their own metronome levels. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's assume that we've successfully tracked this song and we've saved it. Now we're gonna move on to song number two. It's the same general setup and it's the same vibe. So they're gonna be playing at the same levels. The vocalist might be in a booth on an SM7, the bass might be direct. But let's say we wanna use this exactly as a starting point like Tyler asked. In that case, what you wanna do is make sure that you've saved the song and then I'm gonna go ahead and create a new song. And in this case, let's call it new song for tracking. Okay, we're gonna go for tracking. Okay, I'm just gonna leave this set to the default wherever it wants to save it. We're gonna click okay. So now we have a new blank song. Now the important thing to note, like I mentioned, is that when it comes to the IO setup, the basic IO setup is identical. Here's the one key step that you have to do. There's two steps to make this work, but the one thing that you have to do 
is we need to go to our outputs tab. And the first thing I want to do before I do anything is I'm going to enable the exact same Q mixes, HP1, HP2, QA, and QB. That's pretty much the main step that makes this work. We're going to click apply and we're going to click okay. All right, so now that we have this, this is a blank song with a completely blank slate. So we're starting from scratch. I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to import song data. Now from here, it's just a matter of navigating to the folder where you have that original song. So I called this bringing in Q mixes. We will select that. And now we have all the options of what we want to import. Now let's assume that the tempo and time signature and the marker track are going to be independent. They're not going to be the same. So I'm going to leave these unchecked and I'm going to check off everything here. I'm just going to click, hold and drag and we'll leave the voice note out. Now here's the main thing to consider. When we're recording, especially if you're using a takes the layers recording workflow, um, you're going to have events and layers in terms of the track options. You also might have some automation that's been written there. So it's really up to you in terms of whether you want to bring that automation in, but definitely you want to have events and layers deselected. Automation doesn't matter. I don't have it. I'll leave that selected. Definitely media options. We want to deselect this. Now, volume and pan, inserts, sends, and instruments. These are the important options. I don't have any instruments. I'm going to deselect that. Let's click OK. So now, the minute I've imported all these settings, let's now take a look. We'll expand our console out into a larger vertical view. You can see that our reverb sends and everything came over. And in terms of our Q mixes, check this out. Everything came in. Not only did everything come in, but in terms of our track layout for the kick, snare, hats, toms, everything, they're all set to the input that I assigned in the previous session. So essentially, we have a completely blank slate to start off with, with the exact levels and Q mix levels that we had in our previous song. Now, one thing to mention here about the reverb. If you are working in Studio One and you don't have any um, automation tracks created for the channels for your effects returns, these will not show up when you use the import song data dialog. So that's a pretty easy fix. You go to advanced automation and you can enable this preference to automatically create automation tracks for channels. What that means is the minute you create something like an effects channel, that it shows up in Studio One. Now, when it shows up in Studio One, you're able to import that using import song data because import song data uses the tracks function. So this is the main thing to consider is just making sure that you have a default IO setup that you're working with. You want to make sure that you uh, enable the Q mixes that you plan to use before you use the import song data in the new song that you're creating. And then as long as you've saved that version, you just make sure you deselect events and um, layers, and then you're going to get a blank starting point for your brand new song where all of the levels in terms of the main mix and all of the levels in terms of, for example, the Q mixes, they're all going to be at a great starting point, which is exactly what Tyler wants. So anyways, Tyler, I hope that answers your question. And also, I hope that if there's another user who is uh, wondering the same thing, that this is helpful for you too. That's all the time I have available for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.